Yeah, once again, uh, I want to welcome you one, once uh, once again to our program. And uh, it's very interesting what is happening around us today. And that's what I want to talk about today. As uh, from my belief and my Christian perspective, as a follower of uh, Christ Jesus, how should we react? How should we deal with these things? Because currently you can see that the, the whole world is in confusion. Abs absolute confusion. Nobody knows what to do. The government of the world is confused. No one saw it coming. It's a big shock and a surprise to everyone. And what the leaders of this world could do is to apply whatever wisdom they feel they can to try and control whatever they can control. But one thing that, that I found uh, quite fascinating is that uh, Nobody really seemed to have control over this. Uh, you remember in the 2014 when we had the e Ebola case in the Congo, the, the whole story, because it was in Africa, of course, the world paid attention to it, but uh, the, the fear was not as much as it is now. And in fact, you realize just last week here, the, the United Nations, WHO, has to declare the the, the, as a pandemic, meaning this is out of control, this is out of hand. We've seen the whole country, like uh, in, in China, they locked down the whole cities, you know, and in, in Europe right now, Italy is completely at a lockdown. In other words, over 60 something million people cannot go out there, they cannot work, they can't do anything, stay in your house. Schools are closed and for two weeks, for one month, from all over, from Egypt to, 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 to Taiwan, to, to America. <laughs> America is closing its door, telling the Europeans are almost part of what, that you cannot come into our country for the next 30 days. That's how confused and how terrifying this COVID-19 is to a whole lot of people around the world. And for me as a Christian, I, I ask myself, I say, how should we react to these things? Because right now what we see around us, it has created an enormous fear in the heart of people. In fact, I remember when you go to church now, I don't know about your church which you go to another, people are afraid to shake your hands. They've come up with different ways of wanting to shake your hands and all that. And uh, people are panicking and some are not even coming to the church anymore. They want to see at home. They stay at home to see how it's, what is going to be the end of these things. And uh, for me, it's a time to go back to the scripture and begin to reflect the word of Christ. Because the beauty of of following Christ is when you are in Christ, real in Christ, I'm not talking of going to church every Sunday, you are able to foresee because the Holy Spirit that dwells in you allows you to see what is to come or what is going to happen. So when events like this start happening and you know how to read the time that we're living in, in conjunction with the prophecies of the scripture and what the scripture has said, you don't need to be afraid at all. Fear is the last thing that should be on your mind. In fact, it's a time to rejoice. You say, what? What is it talking about? It is a time rejoice of, to rejoice because some of us, when I see me, some of us, who understand the word of God and the truth of the gospel of Christ, knows exactly the time we are in, in the body of Christ at the moment. We knows what is unfolding. And a few of them will try to share with you in this in this program, which I hope you will share with other people if it blesses your heart. First of all, Jesus told us that events like this is going to happen to us. And when it starts happening, the Holy Spirit is going to bring into our remembrance on how to deal with these matters. And he said, we must not be afraid of what is happening in the world. In fact, we should be thankful, we should be grateful, we should be we, we should glorify the Father because the word of the Lord is coming to pass and the word is coming on its ear, on its own judgment. And today we see that. We've seen the little confusion all over, but this that came, 
that really blew the mind of the world, for me, is an introduction of what is to come. You think you have seen, you have not seen nothing. If you understand what the Word of God says concerning the last days, you will understand that this is just an introduction. This is not the real thing. You say, oh, what, 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 what is the real thing then? I tell you, the real thing is the coming. You know, in a theater, when you go to the theater, you go to, 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 to watch either a movie or a live play in the theater, there is that introduction to set the stage, to make everybody relax, to make them feel good so that they can enjoy the full content of what is coming. And once you are now relaxed, you sit back, you enjoy your popcorn and all that, then the real storyline begins to unfold. Then you see the depth of what is, the story is all about. The same thing. The events of the world, what is going to happen in these last days when Jesus said, I will be coming back. And when I come, I'm going to recreate this earth that has been stolen from man and to rule this earth forevermore. He meant every word he said. Because one thing I understand about Jesus that I like about Jesus Christ is that if you check him among all the other religions, he wasn't a prophet or a man who was confused who speak out of just speaking or just talking because he feel like talking. Every word he spoke, he meant it. And because he meant it, every one of them will be accomplished in this earth. Whether you and I will like it or we don't like it. That's the uniqueness about Jesus that made me to believe in him. So much so. So much so. And you need to understand, before I started following Christ, I wasn't just... I wasn't a Christian. I wouldn't put it out that I was a Christian. I wasn't. No. But when I found him and I accepted him into my life, one thing I began to understand is that he doesn't play with words. When he speaks, he meant he mean everything that he says. So we must take it seriously. And when I look at the way the world leaders has co be confused about these whole issues, some of them even bury their heads in the sand right now like ostrich because they don't know what to do. They don't have the solutions. And the church, the body of Christ, that's supposed to be giving people hope out there and begin to let them know this is the time we're in it. In fact, if this is the time, there is a time to preach the gospel, I believe strongly it is now. Because while we have evidence to really tell the world this is what is happening. The church is not faring better. You know why? Because the church itself is not prepared for this. They're not prepared. We sing. We shout hallelujah. We glorify the Lord. But the fact is, deep down in our heart, our heart has been stuck here so much so in this world that we talk of heaven that we have not seen. We talk of heaven that we have not known by the lips of our mouth. That's basically what it is. That's where it ends. But the depth of our soul has not really connected with heaven for us to begin to cast our mind up there, not hear what is happening on earth. Because our soul, our spirit is still entangled with the things of this world. So whatever we do, when situations like this happen, we become as confused, if not more confused, than the world itself. So the leaders of the world are confused. Their head is in the sand, trying to come up with what to do, not knowing what to do. Especially politicians who come, they promise you heaven and earth. Here on earth, they'll promise you heaven, and whereas they can't deliver nothing. You and I have seen it since we were born. They promised us all sorts of things, and yet our life has gotten worse and worse and worse. So when this happens, it's just to, it's to, for me, this COVID-19 is to test the power of the world. The power of the leaders of this world. What they have, what they can deliver. And right now we have seen they can deliver nothing. Absolute nothing. All they can tell us now is lock yourself in for 14 days. Lock yourself in, don't go out. Lock you suspect this, go do that. That's all they can say. They don't have solutions. And it's been like that. And what do we do? Year in, year out, we follow them. They literally has become our savior. Forgetting that he, that actually, that can save our soul. And our spirit is Christ himself. Not religion. Not going to church every Sunday. But your belief and your faith you have in Christ. Is what's going to carry us through this journey that we're in. Because the world is not going to be a better place. It's going to get worse. If you doubt me, write it down. If you think by tomorrow, coming year, two years, five years, ten years from now, or the next generation is going to be better off than this generation we're in. 
Big mistake. Why? From what is happening, from what the scripture has told us, nothing is going to be better. It's going to get worse for the better to come. And that better that we are expecting is when the Lord, the King of Kings himself, have come to retransform everything. So the church itself is afraid. They've been quiet. Even the miracle workers, you haven't been hearing of them. You've not been, they've not been talking about these things. They, they literally also, they are just as confused as the world because they don't understand what the word of God has said regarding this thing. But it's clear to some of us who understand the word. If you read Matthew 24, where Jesus was laying down these guidelines to Christians, to them that we believe, he said, this will happen, that will happen, this will happen. As he began to explain, if you read that entire scripture, he said, when we see these things happening, he said, it is the beginning of sorrow. It is the beginning of trouble that is coming upon the world. He said, but take heart. In other words, you Christian that believe in me, my followers, take heart. Do not be afraid. Even though if this thing is happening, it's not going to come near you. You see, you become afraid when your heart is not prepared for something. When your mind, your heart, your spirit is prepared for something, you don't go wrong. You succeed in what that is. We are scared because our heart is not prepared. That's why people don't come to church. People no longer shake hands. People are afraid. And I ask them, where is your faith? Where is your, apart from faith, what do you believe in? Jesus told us we should not worry about these things. That the way happen, we cannot stop it. Then, why should I be afraid? Because he also within that contest, he made a promise. He said, they will not come near you. So what do you believe in? You don't believe that he's power, he's power, he's power, he's power, I mean, he's powerful enough to, to save you? But you believe he can take you to heaven. But how do you go to heaven when your body is not translated? For you to go to heaven is two ways. Either you die or we have rapture. Rapture now, we haven't seen it. You can die anytime, maybe through this COVID D. You say, no, God forbid. Thank God for that. But nevertheless, we're still going to die anyway. And that's only the time our spirit gets translated to go to heaven. So you cannot go to heaven without translation. And for, our, for us to be translated, one thing or the other has to take place. Death or rapture. Two. And for this, as this happens, then our body will be transformed. And Jesus said, do not be afraid. These things, they will not come near you. But to, we are scared, we are fearful more than the word. So we can't even offer the word hope. Not at all. That is not the believers God is trying to raise to be with him in his kingdom. Why are we so afraid if we understand what the word of truth is and if, did, if we believe with our entire heart? In fact, for me, I rejoice because what is happening around us now is a sign to show that he, Jesus, he is still the master and the controller of everything. I tell you what, look at it this way. Satan knows from the very beginning that his days are numbered. And numbered in the sense that he will be judged accordingly for the work that he has done. And because Satan knows this, what did he do? He tried to take the world and man that God has created in his image with him. When God created man, God did not create man to die. God created man and gave man life. But man chose the path of death. That's the reason why you see today that the pestilence we are dealing with, like this one that is happening, COVID-19 is a pestilence, is that when man sold his birthright to Satan in the Garden of Eden by Adam, one thing that became obvious and clear was that man gave away his rightful ownership of the earth. And Satan took control of the earth and used it as a carrot in the face of a man to dangle it in the face of a man. If you believe in me, I'll give you. Remember when he tempted Jesus, if you can just bow down and worship me, I will give you everything. In this world, I make you the king over it. Jesus says, no, I don't need you. This kingdom is polluted anymore. Already, I don't need it. My kingdom will be reestablished, literally. So Jesus refused to bow to his kingdom. 
Why Satan knew that for him to get at us, he has to use the things of this world, the wealth of this world, to tempt us and see if we're going to fall for it. But what I'm happy about is that that has to change. It has to change whereby Jesus will have to now be, he has to recreate this earth. That's why I said, when he came, before he departed, he gave us a promise. He said, I will go and prepare a place for you. That way, I'll be, you will also join me also. And in the book of Revelation, where we talk about the war of Armageddon, how he's going to destroy the earth, then he will judge Satan and those in rebellion. He said that this earth will be recreated. And that Jerusalem that we see today will be the new head, will be the headquarter of the world. And he, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, will rule over the earth. But for this to come, for this to come, for me to come to do that, Satan is going to have his way. We're going to allow him to do what he wants to do with the world. And part of this is this evil genius that he's going to be unleashing this all sorts of pestilence, all sorts of pestilence of diseases that is going to be unfolding into the world. And I, for me, that is what is shaking. The Lord allows it so that our faith can be shaken, our belief system, our trust in Him can be shaken. It's like a farmer. When a farmer goes to harvest in, after planting for the season, the time for harvest, when he brings the harvest in, he has to take it through the sieve. He pours this thing in the sieve. The machine shakes it, shakes it, shakes it, shakes it. Upon the shaking, it takes out the residue that are not, it's not good enough. The bad ones, the bad quality of, 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 of grains. That is not the, you throw them, you use it for fire, you throw them away. Then they collect the good grains, he bag them up, he put them in the barn for the next season. Jesus has to allow this to happen. In other words, he has to allow Satan to shake the world, to sieve the world, so that we can know who still believe, who still want to follow him. In test of time, do we deny him or do we believe? You remember he asked a question, he said, when I come back, will the Son of Man still find faith in the world? This is the time our faith has been tested. Are you going to hold on to the Lord, still believe that it's the Lord who's actually unwinding his program? To usher in his great coming on this earth. Or you ask him question, Lord, why now? Why are you allowing us to go through this? You promise us heaven, you promise us this, you promise that. But for us to be in heaven, we need to be translated from this body to a new body. And for that to happen, this body has to be damaged, has to be destroyed. You may not like it, but that's what it is. That's the fact. This body is, is, is messed up, it's polluted, it's contaminated, it cannot go to heaven. It belongs here on earth. That's why when we die, it's ash to ash, dust to dust. We go back there. Because man is what the dust. The body cannot go to heaven, but the soul and our spirit, we surely go there. And for that to happen, there has to be a translation. And things like this around us has to happen. More of it is still going to happen worse than this. But now the question is, as Christians, our response is as important as we making it to heaven. Because when we live in fear, like I see Christian now, they are so scared of what is happening around us. They believe the end has come. So as a result, they don't know what to do. They are taking the same path that the whole world is taking. But the Bible said, they that put their trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame. Never. I don't see how I'll be put to shame and Christ that I believe in were allowed COVID-19 to destroy me or kill me. No. But even if that happened per chance, he's preparing a place that I will dwell with him forevermore. And that's why we call it heaven. So as Christians, as a test of our faith, a test of our reliance on Christ, a test of our belief, which I see what it is, this is the time for us to actually begin to preach the gospel to remind people of the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is the time to preach hope and let them know this is not this is the beginning of things. That beyond this, there's greater things that is coming. Not to be afraid of what is happening, that we lose focus of what heaven is all about. We lose focus of what the death of Christ is all about on the cross. We are afraid so much so that 
We are not concerned of what we are going to lose here on earth when we actually have much to gain in heaven. For me, this is the dynamic of what is happening today. The, the, what is happening around us. That the world is getting confused. Fear is killing them. And we are also engrossed in that fear. That is not of God's children. Disease will come. We can't stop it. Murder. Killing. Robbery. Evil. That we see on the face of the earth today. That is completely out of control. Especially in the city. These things will happen. We have no control over it. But they that trust in the Lord. Shall never be put to shame. Never. He will continue to guide us. Lead us until our expected ending. Why will he forsake us in times like this. When we need him more. Have you ever asked yourself that question? We as family, when you, your children, when there is danger in the house, do you, what do you do? You do everything to shield them from them. You don't run from the danger and leave them alone to die. You do everything within your power. If you have your life has to be taken first, that's how much Christ cares for us. So, the fear that surrounds us, that we try to live as Satan wants to make us, in fact, the person under judgment in this whole matter is Satan himself, not us. That's my view. As he's testing his, <laughs> testing his plans on men, God is working on his plan on men as well. Especially his children, those who are called by his name. He's working an exit plan for them. And we're talking of great exit, spectacular exit that we have never seen in the world. Because when it comes, the Bible said, the trumpet that shall blow, the whole world will be, will be alive. They will, they will be, those, even those who are dead, they will rise up to see him. The sound from heaven, the angels, thousands and thousands of angels that, that, that we accompany him to come here. It's going, to be, it's, it's going to be a show that we have never seen in our lifetime. You think you've seen Hollywood effects and all that? That's nothing compared to what the Son of Man is going to produce when he comes. It's going to be glorious. But also it's going to be also a dreadful day for a lot of people. But for those of us who know where we are going, who have hope, who knows our where we anchored on, we are we are looking forward to that day because it's a great day. It's a day of a show that will put the world to Hollywood will be brought to shame. Bollywood will be in shame. Nollywood, they will all be in shame. You've not seen nothing. So when we realize that what we do, there's this great joy that's inside of us. And one thing that also Shock me is in situation like this, Christians are supposed to be in the forefront telling the world what it is. Every other religion, be it Muslim, Hindu, Buddhism, and all that, they are now they are asking questions. They're supposed to be coming to us to tell us, ask us what, what is happening. Where we're supposed to be, be ready, giving them first hand information. This is what is happening. This is why the Lord is doing this. This is what the word of God says. Do you want to believe and repent of your ways? Because religions will not take you to his presence. What will take you to his presence is the death on the cross of Christ. Who has died for the world so that the world might be saved through him. That's what we should be preaching. Nothing more, nothing less. Anything outside that is a waste of time. Man. Everything else is, what is it? It's not vanity. Make a lot of money today, tomorrow you're broke. You have the whole world today, tomorrow you're dead. You're gone. Everybody forgot about you. You see, but when we tell Jesus, taught people about Jesus, how he can save, how he can deliver, and give us eternal life, then we have brought hope to people. That's what we gain more. Then we are preaching the gospel. But today, we are not even doing that. These other confused nation, confused leaders, confused religion, they can't even come to us. Why? Because we also, as Christians, are supposed to produce the truth for them. We have not lived that exemplary life of truthfulness and honesty so that the world can see. If you leave, uh, when I hear around people, people may say, if you want to make money these days, just set up a church. It has become like a, 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 a joke among friends and family. And that is sad. Do you want to blame them? No, that is true. That's what they see. If you look at church today, what it has become, you wonder what is really church these days. People have made it the den of, 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 of Satan, literally. It has become a place of gamble. You give God this, God gives you that. You produce this, God gives you that. God has become their, 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 their slot machine. 
and people are making mockery of what you said. No, they are real, and they they have they are entitled to do that. You see, Jesus said we must live our life exemplary. If you look at Jesus himself, in the midst of the Jew and the Roman, at that time, he, le he lived an exemplary life for them to see. That's why they could not see anything against him. When they brought him onto judgment, the judge said, I didn't find nothing with this man, Pilate. I didn't see nothing with this man that, that would make me to condemn him. So I did not condemn him. You Jew, you condemned him. They say yes, they will carry the blood of his condemnation on their head, which they still carry to this day. Except if they repent. If they don't repent, they still carry it as long as possible. Until Christ come. So for me, the church should be awake to know that for us it's a time of victory. It's not a time of defeat. It's a time of moving on. It's a time of bringing solution, letting the world know that this world we're living in, it will come to an end at some point. Number two, that there is no other hope, no other way except Christ Jesus. Anything outside that is failure. It's waste of time. We need to give people hope. We need to let them know that God will unfold his program to bring this world to an end so that it can be a new world. And for that to happen, the old must give way. Because there's no way the new wine, you can put a new wine into an old wine skin. One must give way so that a new thing can be established. And that has for that to happen, Satan has to do his job and complete it. But woe unto men who align himself with the enemy. Because where he's going to be, that way you will be also. Judgment was not meant for man. Man walked himself into judgment. Judgment was meant for the devil. But man decided to form an alliance with the devil, then he became partaker of the judgment that is to come. And that's the reason why when you give your life to Christ, you are what? Exonerated. You are taken away from this judgment. So, Satan is doing his job to fulfill what needs to be done in these last days. And you, as a man created in the image of God, you may need to make a decision whether you want to be part of Satan's program or you want to be part of God's program. And for you to be part of God's program, you have to alienate yourself, cut yourself off from the line of the enemy and join the winning team, which is Christ Jesus. Because if you don't have Christ in you, you want to live a life of the world presented to you by the devil. Where he is, there you will be also. With the judgment that come upon him, that's what will come upon him. The afflictions and everything that he will inherit, you will be part of it. This world has nothing to offer. Everything we hear, see here is vanity. And they will pass away. We see these things, we don't understand it. That's the reason why we act, we behave what we behave. The day the Lord opened our eyes to understand these things, that Christ through the church is the solution for this world, our attitude as Christians will change. Our behavior will change. Our desire will change. Our needs will change. The way we reach out, everything will change. The way we relate to people, everything will change. But oftentimes there's this deep dark in mind of ours we think I can be in here, I can be in there. After all, God promised us the whole world. No, he did not. What Jesus told us is in the world where we have trouble. But do not worry, I have overcome the world. And that's the reason you see Christians, we still fall sick. We still go through the problem the ordinary person in the world who doesn't believe in Christ go through. We see people Great prophet like Elisha, who performed wonders in the Bible, the time came, he first sick, he died. We've seen great prophets in the Bible, they still die in sickness. And you ask yourself, why? It shows we are still human. But the difference between us and the world is that we have Christ, who has given us eternal hope. That's the difference. Jesus never promised us that when we come to the world, we come to him, we follow him, we we'll become the, 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 the richest people in the world. We we'll become No, he said, we, we have trouble. But do not worry, I have overcome. If you need anything, 
talk to your father which is heaven, he will provide it for you. But that's it. For us, so what? To be content with what we have. Not the way we want to kill ourselves and live our life as if we have no hope. Our life is built around, as Christians, is built around contentment. Because our contentment is built around hope. Based on the salvation we have in Christ. And that is based, and, and that leads us to eternity. Knowing that the real journey of life begins in eternity. Not this temporary one we're just passing through here. On so, we need to have this clear understanding about what Christianity is all about. It's not to bring us fear. The Bible says fear is a torment. COVID-19 is nothing but a torment. And it's part of it. HIV, AIDS is all torment. This thing, Satan is all thrown all over the place today for his own gain. But I tell you, he's not going to gain as much if we disrupt his program. And for us to disrupt his program is to let the world know about Christ. That Christ has paid it all. He has done everything he needs to do. That these are signs of what is to come. These are signs of what is going to usher the glory of the Son of Man. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And by the way, we, you remember the name of Jesus. The Word of God said his name is what? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. A lot of you knows what it means. Our God is with us. I mean, look at it this way. If we know who we're talking about, that name, Emmanuel, our God is with us. In other words, it doesn't matter the circumstances the world is going through right now. He is with us, Emmanuel. Our God is with us. So we have nothing to be afraid of. We have nothing to worry about. We, have nothing to, we just need to trust and to believe. Because he is with us. Beloved, the word of God is true. How it affects your life is how you believe in it. If you believe with half mind, that's what you're going to get. If you believe with your whole heart, you will get the fullness of Christ in you. Going to church on Sunday is not good enough. One thing Christ has commanded us to do, which he came and he demonstrated in the book of Genesis when the Lord was giving us the commandment. He said we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our might, and with all our soul. Not halfway through our spirit, halfway through our mind. We must love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind. And if we do, it benefits us more than it benefits anybody. You must remember, when you wake up in the morning, raise your head high. Because your father, he is the king of the world. He created all this. Even though Satan is ruling over it right now, don't worry. There is a better heaven and earth that is coming. This earth is going to be wiped out and be recreated. Everything you see around us today will be cleaned out. Because you know what? It's been polluted. Christ is not going to come and dwell in the midst of pollution. It's not going to happen. So everything will be wiped out, it will be recreated. And the Bible says when it's recreated, we're talking of where streets will be made of gold. Right now people go to the ground to dig the gold. No, it will be, the street you'll be walking on will be gold. You will need a car to drive around. Christ will be in control. He will be our Lord. He will be our everything. So I don't know where your mind has been, how you've been led, how you've been deceived. If you have not been able to look back onto the cross or you don't understand the meaning of the cross, you need to go back. If you don't understand what your salvation is, what Christ died for, you need to come back. If you are backslidden, your heart is there and there, you need to return back home. Hmm? You need to know. The world is not going to get better. You can, you can try, the world can try, the leaders can try, politicians can do whatever they are doing now. Nothing is going to get better. For how you understand the word of God and how you applicate it into your life is what's going to make the difference. It's a game of survival right now. And that survivor, either you are surviving in Christ or you survive the way of the world. And the way of the world will bring you death. But the ways of the survivor of Christ will bring you life. 
I know you've heard a lot of gospel, you've heard a lot of teachings, but I tell you what, it's simple. Your belief, your unbelief does not change God's program or what God is going to do. So let's prepare our heart to what is to come. This COVID-19 will come and go. But the word of God remains. Is there going to be more deadlier one than COVID-19? Yes, of course. More deadly stuff is coming. You say, are you a prophet of doom? I am not. I'm only quoting the word of God. I'm, told, I'm telling you about what the word of God says. So, for me, I'm excited knowing that the coming of the Son of Man is closer than what we think. So for me, that gives me a heart to rejoice. But on the other hand, I weep for them that refuse to see the light that can set them free, which is Christ Jesus. So today, it's my prayer for you that the Lord will open your eyes of understanding so that you understand exactly what we're talking about. That the Lord will allow you to see beyond what you're seeing. So it's my pleasure to come to your room again. I hope you enjoy this message. Even if you don't, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, share, subscribe, put that little bit in so that when we publish, you're able to receive it. We love you. And above all, remember you're sharing the gospel with me. Please share. God bless you.